So much marriage issues are caused by the lack of ability or the lack of intentionality to just sit down and have an open conversation about money, about debt, about budgets, about you know what what are our kids cost, you know how how much are we going to pay for these? Your blended family has a hundred percent chance of success when you do it God's way. We are Blended Kingdom Families, and we want to provide biblical resources to heal and restore families with a message of hope for the next generation. Let's get after it. Hey guys, welcome back to the BKF Podcast. I am so excited, and notice I said I, because my sidekick, the better version and much better looking um, uh, wife, is not here today. She lost her voice, and she left me astray to handle uh, a few podcasts for us. So so I'm excited to be with you and hopefully you and I will have a great time together. If you haven't already, take an opportunity, like, share, comment, send us an email or your your responses or different podcast ideas. We'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email at info at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Also, coming up in September, September 30th, is the Blended Couples Conference. This is something, this this is a no-miss situation. Uh, It's going to be at Fellowship Church uh, in Grapevine, Texas. We have an amazing, outstanding lineup of speakers. It's an all-day conference for you and your spouse. You can go to blendedkingdomfamilies.com, click click the events page, and you can grab your tickets right there. Today, we're going to be doing uh, a really deep dive into the finances side of blended families. And this covers a multitude of topics. And it is one of, as, as a marriage therapist and have been for 17 years, it is one of the most common things that I see as a wedge between couples in blended families simply because they have not done the, the forework to make sure that every topic is covered. So we're just going to kind of dive into it and just kind of talk through one, like that beginning, to, uh, really that pre-marriage, and then kind of that beginning to blend stage and really some more difficult conversations as we talk about estate planning. And again, I'm not a financial expert. I'm not a uh, estate planning expert. I'm just giving you my best pieces of knowledge, wisdom, based on what I've seen as a marriage therapist and as working with this many blended families. So first, let's look at before you get married and kind of what do those conversations look like? If you have been married before and you have kids, or if you haven't been before, before and have kids and you have child support as part of your uh, package, um, you need to have conversations early and often with your soon-to-be spouse as far as what that's involved. Child support is not an optional thing. It's not something that you um, can look at and say, hey, this is really an expense that you know may or may not be there. It is with you. And as long as you're court-ordered by a judge to pay that, it's going to be a part of your new marriage. So having spousal buy-in there is so important and really expressing how you view child support. If you view child support as I'm giving money to my ex-spouse that they can do what they want with it, it may always be a source of contention. Uh, But if you view it as, hey, this is money I pay to support my child or children, and this is something I get to do. It's something I am able to do and I'm blessed to do. Regardless of what happens to that money, um, if you look at it in the, in the frame of saying, hey, this is my responsibility as a parent and as somebody who, as we're getting married, it's going to be our responsibility as a married couple to take care of this. So have that conversation early. Make sure that you and your, your spouse are on board. You're all on the same page so that, you know, contention doesn't arise from this concept of, well, you know, that money really should be going to here or it should, shouldn't be spent on this. Honestly, that's, that's too much to worry about. Um, if you look at it as this is an expense, that's my responsibility, and I'm blessed to be able to do this, and it's going to be a part of our marriage, um, we just need to do this. So have that conversation often and early. The next thing I would talk about is as you guys look at your combined finances. So I've, I've seen podcasts, and I've, I've pe- heard people talk, and they're like, no, I'm going to have my account and their account, and we separate money and nothing's combined. Well, that's really not the way marriage was designed, and it's not the way it's supposed to function. Uh, Again, there's probably not one shoe fits all here, but the best case scenarios that I've seen are those that, first of all, they just have a clear understanding. They've talked about it beforehand. So a lot of times you'll see couples with 
a joint bank account, which is where all the expenses kind of come from. And sometimes that's the only account. Other times I've seen it where they have a joint account and everything comes from there. The bills are paid from there and they may have smaller accounts that are set up for their individual spending so that, you know, again, if you're a two income house earner or you're a one income house earner, the most important thing I can say in this, regardless of how you construct it, it's always better to have conversations about it just to ensure everybody's on the same page. One of the biggest things that I see is when you're newly blended and you're in this new marriage, you're so quick to agree to things that you don't think through how you may feel about them a year or two years later. Or you, how do you feel about you know debt? Uh, I know one of the things Vanessa and I talk about a lot is you know when we got married, I had a lot of debt. And so that was one of the things that she now had a lot of debt, even though she came into our marriage debt free. So again, having conversations about just brutal honesty of saying, hey, this is where I'm at. I mean, if you need to go get your credit report, print it out, give it to each other saying, hey, this is this is who you're marrying, because the credit report is basically a, uh, a report of your financial history. Um, but be open and honest about that, because it will it will reduce the concept of, well, I didn't know what I was getting into, so I want to complain about it or I want to adjust it or, or I'm not really sure this is, is vital or uh, key to our marriage working. So make sure that you have open and honest conversations about it. And again, you need to think about what you're spending money on. So as you, again, we're talking about this newly blended scenario. Do you have an idea of what you're going to spend money on and what shouldn't or shouldn't be spent out of the joint account. All this can be discussed, um, whether that is in, you know, kind of conversations before you get married, or maybe it's in pre your premarital counseling sessions. I know as a, a marriage therapist, I do a lot of premarriage counseling, and this is one of the areas I spend the most amount of time on. So have those conversations about what, what should and shouldn't be spent money on. Um, the next thing is create a budget. Okay. So let me, let me dive into this and what this means. So I am fully aware that usually people are gifted in different ways. And you may be one of those people that is gifted in financial management. And whether you're the, the wife or the husband, uh, it doesn't really matter. It matters is what you're gifted in. If you are gifted in managing finances, be responsible for that. And if your spouse is gifted in that area, let them have that responsibility because um, you want to have somebody who's really paying attention to what's going on. And if you're not one of those people and they are, then let them have that responsibility. But creating a budget for your family, again, what are we going to spend money on? What is our child support commitment? Uh, are we saving? Are we going to buy a home? Are we going to use money for investments? have these conversations openly and honestly on where you are today. Again, so much marriage issues are caused by the lack of ability or the lack of intentionality to just sit down and have an open conversation about money, about debt, about budgets, about, you know, what, what are our kids cost? You know, how, how much are we going to pay for these? Um, you know, hey, you know, I, I will I will admit, you know, Amazon is a great thing, but it can also be a huge deterrent and cause of stress in a marriage because somebody's spending habits are a little bit more uniquely um, positioned for that package delivery. Um, I often make a joke, like when I see the, the Amazon drivers come up, I always tell them like, did you know my wife was on the no delivery list? And they always look at me like I'm crazy, but I think it's funny. Anyway, um, create a budget and use that as your measuring stone as you move forward. Now, that budget may need to be adjusted or altered as, you know, uh, salaries go up, as, you know, maybe more kids are introduced or as different circumstances change. So be open to discussing that, whether that's, you know, on a monthly basis or on an annual basis. I know Vanessa and I are getting ready to go and do our vision retreat here very soon. And this is a time that we specifically set aside so we can have intentional conversations about all the different areas of our marriage, including finances, and making sure that everybody's on the same page. So 
intentionality is the key there. Make sure that you're setting that time aside to say, do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns? We've talked about, you know, how we're going to do our money in our pre-marriage session. We've talked about, you know, our child support obligations. We've talked about, you know, creating a budget. Is there anything about this this d doesn't gel with you? Or maybe you have questions or you have concerns about. Have those conversations openly and honestly and without judgment. You know, it's a sensitive issue and it's one that can be really easily trigger to high emotions. So if your spouse has a concern, be patient in listening to them and understanding that if it's a concern of theirs, then it needs to be a concern of yours. So the last thing I want to kind of dive into is estate planning. And again, I'm not a professional estate planner. I don't do that for a living. I'm just telling you it's important. And so many people neglect this concept for a variety of reasons. It doesn't have to be a big scary thing. You know, at some point you're gonna pass away. It's just gonna happen. It's like death and taxes, it's gonna happen. So what's gonna happen afterwards? You need to have conversations about, and with your spouse, about hey, what does this look like? We need to not be scared of this. We need to not, um, you know, avoid this topic, but get with a great estate planning person who can say, hey, this is where we are, this is where we're going, this is what we'd like to do. Another big conversation in blended families is what does that look like in terms of what you will pass on to your children or stepchildren? Again, I'm not here to push my philosophy on this, I'm just telling you, it's a point of conversation that you need to have with your spouse. What does estate planning look like after you and I are gone? Will everything will be divided equally? Will it, uh, will some things go to certain siblings or certain children and not others? Um, what does that look like? And why is that important? Because it's a source of conversation, not only for you and your spouse, but also your children, especially if you have adult children. And it's something that if you don't decide beforehand, it will be decided for you after the fact. And that's why estate planning is so important. And guys, we, we partner with a lot of great other ministries that help. There's a great ministry called Blended Wealth. They really focus on uh, helping blended families. Uh, also, wherever you are, wherever you're located, again, finding a great estate planning attorney or firm, I, I just can't suggest at a higher level. And just, especially in blended families, I know it's a source of contention. Anyway, guys, finances, I, I feel like I did okay without my better half here, although it was a little different, to be honest with you. I don't have anybody to bounce everything off of. Um, but I'm really passionate about making sure as a marriage therapist that you avoid pitfalls of destruction in your marriage. And finances is one of the top ones. So if you've listened to this and you're like, I really either A, something you said triggered something in me and I'd like to go talk to my spouse about it. That's a great thing. If you were on the other side and you're like, we have never talked about this, I would highly suggest grabbing your spouse and saying, hey, let's have an intentional conversation about money and finances and what we're doing and maybe we can get on a better page. That's gonna be a, an amazing conversation to have. If you've never had conversations with your children about your estate planning, Yes, now is the time to do it. Not later. We are not guaranteed another day on earth. So don't wait to do this. I promise you if you'll do this, not only will you be in a much smoother place in your marriage, but also in your blended family. Guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great day. I can't wait to see you again next week. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.